Hey guys, this is Terrence. We're going to have a good live stream today. You might not have known it was coming, but we're going to be on soon. So tell everybody about it, and we'll see you in just over a minute. Hey guys, Terrence here, Neptune Systems, another edition of Let's Talk Reef. We keep doing these and doing these, and we're loving it, huh, Paul? Here we are again, <laughs> you know, another Tuesday, Yep. another 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. We try to be timely. Yeah, we do our best to be consistent. We, we you know, we miss a couple weeks, though. Yes, yeah, so certain things get in the mm -hmm. way sometimes. Uh, I did do a live stream last week. Uh, yep. We'll talk about that for that a little bit with Devin. Pretty cool. Uh, I thought so. I yeah. thought it was fun. I mean, I made time for it while I was on out, you know. I didn't watch it, it back, I have to say. <laughs> I watched, it was a lot. Yes. But we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I was out on vacation mm -hmm. for, uh, I don't know, four or five days. Yes. Had uh, originally planned to take my son, who's 21 years old now, to I New know. Orleans. Because he's a huge, you know, music buff, blues, mm -hmm. everything. We're going to go on the blues trail. Yep. We're going to do all of that. And... Uh, yeah, then we had a little incident in New Orleans on the exact days that we were supposed to go there. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, you know, was thinking about you during the trip. I even texted you during my vacation um, and, uh, you know, saw wh what you were going to do and how you were going to handle it. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Terrence's son is a huge music buff, right? <laughs> he huge. can tell like, you who played, like, like, like the guy, drums on one track on Led Zeppelin back in guy's 1973. A guy's a Wikipedia, you know, version of music. And he's know. got range. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, he'll, he'll into some of the stuff that I've been in over the years, he'll get really into the details and stuff like that. Yeah, so the, the only thing fun. he likes second, I think, to uh, music is uh, one of my loves, which is roller coasters. Yes. So I, I, I floated the idea to him. I said, uh, we haven't been for seven years. Let's go out to Cedar Point yep. and do some roller coasters. Boo, yeah. And he was like, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Mm -hmm. So actually, this is a picture up here right now. This is one of the newest rides there, or maybe it is the newest ride, uh -huh. our second. It's oh, called you told me. Val Raven, it's called. And uh, yeah, there's three rows, and they take you up. They bring you around that curve. You can't see the drop. Uh, I wish the picture had the drop in it, but mm -hmm. it basically drops you at like 85 degrees. But before it drops you, it hangs you over the edge. And then you have a 225 foot drop. Front row, right? Front row. You have to. Be. Always front row yeah. on every ride. I don't care how much more time it takes. <laughs> it's always the front row. So we went up to Cleveland. Then after that, we went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. So we got did get the music stuff in there. It had been about seven years since he had been there. Yeah. And uh, he was unhappy because some of his favorites haven't even been nominated for uh, for 2022 yet. Uh, one of them is uh, oh. You'll get it. Oh no gosh, one. I'll get it. <laughs> get it. Sleater Kinney. Ah. Sleater, do you know that band? I do know that Okay, band. so he's a huge, that's his, like his favorite band is Sleater Kinney. Anyway, mm -hmm. enough about Diego. Uh, while we were out there too, though, we decided, uh, or I should say I decided, because I can't go anywhere in the country without stopping at a fish store. I'm aware of your problems. So, yeah, it is a problem. <laughs> uh, so we went and stopped out in New Albany. I was told by my in-laws, or sorry, my, my, my uh, relatives uh, out in Ohio that I have out there that it's not New Albany, 
It's New Albany. 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 Louisville, Albany. These yes. are the ways that you, you say it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So we went out there. We went to Reef Systems. Mm -hmm. Todd out there has a cool place. It's right out um, out in the country next to um, uh, right next to his house, actually. But it's a huge yeah. facility. Coral Farm. Been doing our stuff forever. Yeah. I got I got stories about Todd. <laughs> Everybody's got you know, stories about Todd. We won't uh, go into all the details of Todd's stories. Great here. guy, you know he does. Passion. He's a very passionate guy, and um, you know when I started support many many moons ago, you know when he called me and told me that he had you know eight coral raceways mm -hmm. that he was doing research for you know the University of o uh, Ohio University. Okay. Ooh, almost a no. huge fruit. No, 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 no. Was the, it Ohio University or was it the Ohio State University? The Ohio State okay, University. Okay, they're two different places. I, huge faux pas. Yes. I, uh, I'm, I'm sure it'll come up here in the chat soon. Uh, but you know, and I didn't understand it, but he has been dedicated to our brand and our product, mm -hmm. you know, since two th the er the mid 2000s. Right. You know, with the Apex Classic and really pushing it to the limit even then. Um, you know, and has just continued to be a great performer. Well, his store is, is astounding. I can yeah. sit here and go through all the pictures I took there. Every yeah. tank was looking amazing. You did a live stream there, right? Yes, we did do a live mm -hmm. stream, so you can go check that out if you want. And as we go around the store, you can see there he's got five sky boxes on top of there. Yeah, I love that. And it, gosh, that looks good. Yeah, so this I is I know a, which tank that is. That looks good. It's an eight-foot tank, okay? So what's really cool here is, you know, Obviously, we have a lot of doubters out there. Mm -hmm. They wonder about things like spread and coverage and no all way. of this. There's no way. There's no way that this yeah, light yeah. is going to have the coverage or can do it. Well, it's putting out par values that matter down at the bottom. He's all about the corals. So he's, you know, he was astounded by what it did. But mm -hmm. also he said, look, I'm going to wait and see how things go because that's how I am. I grow corals. So mm -hmm. I respect that completely. But he ex he pulled out three Radeon G5s there okay. to put the sky over this tank so that he could get more coverage over the tank. So do you have any before or after? Or? I do not have the before from him. Good. I think good. Tom has one. Uh -huh. uh, but, uh, but yeah, he pulled them out, put them over the tank. I interviewed him a little bit while I was there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was a really, um, really cool to see it over a tank like that. We I, got a lot more going in around. What the I love is there's no filter on this yep. picture at all. This is just how the sky takes pictures. Yep. You know, and um, yeah, I don't even think you're in photo mode if I had to guess. I don't remember on this particular yeah. picture, but uh, but certainly it was but, fun going out. And there it's also it. the there's, there's light everywhere. Yeah. Right. I mean, like you, the, look in the, the huge, bottom corner. You have right huge, you have these huge coral colonies and everything, mm -hmm. and just just light everywhere. Yep. You know. Yep. For sure. Um, okay. So what what else has been happening for me, Paul? So I did come home from vacation. Um, yeah, tank I mean, was okay. Yeah. Tank. Your tank did good, from what I saw. Yeah. You know, I, uh, Fish my, were hungry. I was also um, uh, I was also on vacation last week. Or oh, that's right. The week right. before last. Yep. Right. Yep. I kind of we kind of had overlap. You, you went. You went and saw fish too. I did. I went. I was in Hawaii. Um, it was a great vacation, you know. And uh, I've snorkeled before and things like this, but I've never had the situation where I can just continually just go off mm -hmm. the beach and just spend hours. Whenever out you feel there. like it, as much as you want. Yeah, I probably did 10, 12 hours of snorkeling. I'd come back every like hour and a half to let my wife know that I was still alive and. and <laughs> well, I have stories there know. too. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, just saw some great fish. I had a great experience with an octopus for a little while of ten or fifteen minutes of. Me finding an octopus, the octopus being like, you don't see me, and then, you know, just back and forth. Him Yellow changing. tangs, Achilles oh, tangs. Oh, saw all those, yeah. I had a soft fowl, fowler eye tang. Oh, fowler oh, that's my favorite fish. Had to that. have been probably a foot and a half. I had a flyby sea turtle experience, you know. Anyways. Fowler eye tang, I'm still stopping him. Yeah. If you haven't seen a fowler eye tang. Not like not like one of the little ones. Yeah. Not, not one of the juvies. But right. when they get when they get big, big they look oh beautiful. They've got gosh. so much color variation in them, mm -hmm. and and in their fins, and uh, mm -hmm. they're just they're just great looking fish. Yeah, yeah. And, but uh, definitely, you know, was a re-energize, and I just love aquariums. I love the, the ocean. And did your tank do okay while you were gone? Yeah, it's doing well. It's doing well. Um, I could definitely give it some more attention. You know, it's getting to the point now where I need to. I need really need to trim things back. Yeah, you it know, is getting really loaded in there. It is overgrown. It reached its it reached its peak kind of like, um, you know, before you pulled the radion off, mm -hmm. and then you stuck the sky over it, and stuff grew, 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 uh -huh. and now it's just everything. Sh it, now the the colonies are just so large all on the way top, out, yeah, and they're just shading everything below. And I mean, granted, a lot of lights getting down there, but it's just. It's just time to yeah to, to spend some spend some time with my tank. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So. Well, I did. I I got a little maintenance in on mine. I for the longest time have been using the same uh, like ten foot piece of 
of inch or inch and a quarter tubing to do my water changes yeah, out of my I'm, big sump that I have. I'm familiar with it. And uh, I just got sick of it. So over the weekend, I was at Home Depot and I got a pool hose. Was finally. this, wait, wait, was this it? So I, whenever you go to Home Depot, right? Were you going to Home I Depot to was. get a pool hose? I actually Or was. were you like walking by and you were like, Holy cow, that could change things. No, I had me. weird things on my list. I had mm. this on my list. I had a uh, rooting powder for mm. doing some new cuttings that I had on mm -hmm. my list. And I had a uh, new toilet valve. <laughs> so it was but, a, the, but the pool hose, the pool hose was, was in there. Was number one. Yeah. I mean, you're, the, the, the intention. 35 right? feet of pool hose. And uh, yeah, so I have the ability. Oh, he dropped some. Uh oh. What was that? Uh, are we still working? Still live? Yeah, sorry. Oh, okay. he dropped that. That's why you get Sennheiser. Uh, microphones guys because yeah. they, they actually last because <laughs> you big oaks like me right <laughs> <laughs> but anyway yeah so i put this i have a big sump it's like a four foot by eight foot mm -hmm. sump and it just gets tons of grime in the bottom of it and with with this kind of hose you can go 100 gallons like this mm -hmm. and it picks everything up doesn't clog i just kept kicking myself saying why didn't i do this like five years ago yeah it was the greatest thing ever took it right out to the canal behind my house so you're able to get a siphon going with yeah that. oh yeah it was like <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> it was it was serious. serious. Good to work for that. Like my one. head was imploding when yeah, I was yeah, trying yeah, to, yeah. To, to get a siphon going. But the thing is, you got a lot of time, so you didn't get like mm -hmm. you didn't get that that that, that, <laughs> that would have been that a little that would have been a little bit of uh, a force. So yeah, that was that. And then uh, and then on Sunday, I actually checked my my one of my parameters for the first time in about a year. No. Yes. Yes. You tested something. I tested nitrate in the tank um, because I was like, "Wow, maybe my nitrates are creeping up, and I don't know it." You know, I run a sulfur denitrator, but mm -hmm. I don't run. A lot, I don't do a lot of tests because my trident tests the things that you know matter the most, right? Mm -hmm. And then you know the the nitrate and the phosphate. I just kind of watch the tank. Yeah, and if alkalinity starts to change, and you know that you're dosing the same amount, right? Yeah. The first thing you check is is my calcium reactor working and those sorts of things. Then after that, you're like, okay, alkalinity is changing a lot. These are the sort of things that you start right. Testing. You're wondering what yeah. else is happening in the tank. So yeah. I just for the heck of it, though, I pulled it out and tested. This is the high range one, which mm -hmm. in you my opinion to, is the only one you should use. You need to use that low range one. It <laughs> just has a few steps. Yeah, just, just a, a few. few. No, I got news for you. If my if my nitrates are under two, I think I'm not going to wonder how far under two they are. You better watch out. Uh, but I so would you, appreciate. You need to feed more. Yeah. That's what that probably, means. Probably, probably. Your heniocasis are hungry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I wish they would put just low on there, not zero. Because if it is only really go down to two, right? Yeah. Uh, as far as its accuracy, maybe it does go down to zero. I don't know. If you went with the right one, you could. But, yeah. But anyway, it's definitely not something I have to worry about, and I'm going to move on from that. For sure. I don't have zero nitrates. All I can tell you is um, if you have a big tank and you can you, you can run a sulfur denitrator and you can run it safely, mm -hmm. that's a key point there, mm -hmm. it is godsend in keeping have acros. We, we've done an episode on your nitrator. Might your have. Sulfur yeah, I think, denitrator. I think, so I think, I think might we, have. I think we've talked about it before. Yeah, I inverted the ORP mm -hmm. probe and yeah, all we'll, that. We won't get into that. But it, it definitely, definitely cool stuff to have one of those because this mm -hmm. is what happens. You know, you don't have to worry about much. Anyway, so there was that. And then there was over the weekend, you know, everybody's kind of kicking back and tired by the end of the weekend. And there's my little Teddy. <laughs> I had to show one picture of Teddy. <laughs> he's he is, zonked. He he's, was at the dog park two days on the weekend. And he is just. He, he's got some energy. He is, he is the energy of the household. But I know it has nothing to do with fish, but. He's an awesome dog, so I thought I'd show him up there. So that's kind we, of what's been going well, on. Well, I mean, you wanted to give kind of, we wanted to give kind of a recap. Like we haven't, I don't think we've done a Let's Talk Reef for three, four weeks at this point. It mm, would be my guess because vacations and and mm -hmm. you know the, the Devin live stream, all these different things. Yep, we weren't able to be around for it. So uh, okay, so that's all kind of what's going on in our world. So what's going to be going on in the Neptune world? Well, first and foremost. Um, oh, you know what? Uh, let's go to those pictures next. Let's talk a little bit more just real quickly about Tank. We'll swing back around on it. Uh, we'll leave the other full screen ones to the, uh, to the other one. This is the Tank, by the way, for those of you that want to know. We'll show another uh, full Tank shot when we're talking more about Sky stuff. But this is kind of the range of lighting. Of uh, Obviously, you can go much wider than this, but it would look ugly. This is like what you would get with like 10K all the way up to... This, so this is a, this is going to be a little bit more on the white side. Uh, you, yes. you probably have your blues pulled back a little bit Correct. based on what I'm guessing here. This is like if yeah. you were like old school running 10K, mm -hmm. this is what it would look I'd like. I'd say you're probably 100% white, 50% blue in that in that picture if I Maybe. had to guess. Maybe. Let's see, something around there. But then you can see how far you can go the other direction, right? Which is mm -hmm. you can get it into that super blue mode. And I didn't use any filters on Or you need the orange filter. Yeah, you, you need mean, an orange for, filter. For that, for that picture to look good, you need to put an orange filter yep. on it. 
Yep, and so. uh, that's my little uh, hybrid coral on the top there now, Paul. It's reaching for the top. I put it up in the top of the tank. You just top middle. Yeah, you just. I can't, love it. You can't get rid of them. So Battle OCR says that, that the blue looks like poop. <laughs> hey, it's all a matter. Uh, everybody of Everybody likes something a little bit different, you know. You know so. um, and remember, this is no filtering or anything like that. Uh, it does need an orange lens, and it would look really yeah, cool. Yeah, it would look really cool. Yeah. Orange lens. Anyway, mm -hmm. so that's what's going on in my tank right there. So sky is the big news right now. But uh, first, we've got uh, sky. First, we've got events that are coming up that we should mention. We do. We have two events coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is in Chicago, the middle weekend of October. Reef of Palooza, so Chicago. So about one month away. Uh, I think it's, it's the weekend of the 17th or something. It's the 16th, 17th. 15th, 15th and 16th, 17th. 15th, 16th, 17th. Something like 15th. that, right. Yeah. It's the, it's, it's the uh, Saturday, Sunday of that of that ever week that is. Correct, in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And we will, uh, yeah, we'll be there. We're putting the full show on. Putting the full show on. We'll have a bunch of people there. We'll mm -hmm. even have uh, some BRS people there. With yes, us at the booth. It, it gives, it's a great opportunity to do uh, some integration yep. and get some VRS people and Neptune people yeah. hanging out. Get them to see what it's about at the booth. Mm -hmm. And then uh, come the end of the month, we're going to be in Dallas, Texas. We will be uh, at Aquashella mm -hmm. uh, for Halloween. So they're calling it something Shella, Fritashella, or I don't know. Anyway, uh, I don't know. Uh, Adam will yeah. probably. Uh, 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 a bump they, in they here with what it name. actually but is. But anyway, uh, Aquashella, which is a really cool show. Thirtieth um, and thirty first. Yeah. Or is it thirty first and first? It's the know, last. It's is. the last weekend. All I know is logistically, we have to get all the trade show stuff to Chicago. Then we have to get the trade show stuff logistically to Dallas, From and, we, and we have to send all of the stuff necessary yep. to do both shows. Uh, so that those are always really a lot of fun to plan all that out. For certain. So, so those are what's coming up in the shows. After that, I don't think we have another one. No, I think that's it for that's it for the season. We get into um, you know Thanksgiving, right? Um, Christmas and all the things. Might that be some regional ones that are there. Thanksgiving, some and of Christmas. These places around the country, but I don't know which ones. I there are. don't have. A, I don't have. Remember, anyway, so you want to see us? Chicago pre, or Dallas? Remember pre-COVID, we had the tour. Yes. Remember we had the tour sheet, you know, of all and the places. And we kept scratching them all. Oh, that was, that was good. That was good. Yeah. I guess we'll have to do that again for 2022. Okay, because 2022 good. is going to be a new year. I thought 2021 was going to be a new year. <laughs> no. 2022, new year. Yes. None of this. Because we're not getting uh, California Reef of Palooza this year. That's a bummer. I don't. Let's not. Yeah, I know. I know. All right. Well, we got any good comments Look there? at that. Derek Thomas says, Neptune has the best support tech than any other company out there. They truly care about their customers. Thanks, Terrence. Yeah, he contacted me over the weekend, had a problem, and I uh, got him through to some technical support over the weekend. You used all so, of the channels that needed yep. to be utilized, yep. and our team was able to get in touch with him right away. Yep. Yes. So AJ says, why not get a booth in the Valley Coral Farmers Market Coral Show this Saturday, September 18th? Vincent, are you going to that? No? Is that here in California? I think that's the third one he's done oh, here. Oh, Sunnyvale, in it the, says. In the val in, you know, the yeah, Reef Vincent Corals will be market. there. Uh, it's, the third, <laughs> it's the third or fourth one they've done. It's, it is a coral show. It, is, it has no dry goods. No one's in Well, that's why Vincent will be there, because he loves coral. I know. But, <laughs> and he doesn't live far from Sunnyvale. You, yeah. He knows Sunnyvale well. <laughs> he's off the side like, he, he is. <laughs> you idiot. Yeah. What are you doing? Um, anyway, okay, so we, a lot of talk about uh, the sky. We had last week Devin's stream. So mm -hmm. if you guys haven't seen it, you can go out and watch it on Devin's channel, Reef Dudes Reef channel. Dudes, yep, yep. Uh, I recommend it for you guys uh, to go take a look. If you want to kind of understand also some of the, I'd say, the particulars of the hardware, some of the questions that have come up of why we built certain things a certain way. Mm -hmm. uh, he kind of grilled me on all kinds of questions. Yeah, he didn't let you get out of much. No, no. He, there was a lot know. of there's a lot of questions that were out there on the internet. He just kind of rat a tat tatted down all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, we went over it. Also, we did uh, some testing. Some people thought it was meant to be comparative testing. No. Um, and it really wasn't. It was meant to be comparative, between, just showing differences in different lights between air and water, not right. between light to light necessarily. Yeah. I think also it's, um, you know, you get, you want to you want to also come from a place where, where everyone knows what it looks like, you know? And I think, right. you know, uh, as much as we can say, well, everyone knows what the newest version looks like. Right. It's not necessarily the case. Yeah, you know? I, I mean, in this, in this case, what I think was most important, and, and ironically, BRS last week did a, uh, a live, uh, not a live stream, a, a video on it in their BRS Investigates. 
yeah. last week where they did air to water and the difference. And really what it, com it comes down to, and I think a lot of people are really mistaking what it's for, is different geometry of lights and lenses and everything that goes between them work differently in air or in water. So if you test them only in air, you're testing them in an environment where they're not used at all. Right. And when you test them in water, you're testing them in an environment that, while not perfect, mm -hmm. right? Because you have rock, or some people have longer, or bigger, or dirty glass, or whatever. All of these variables, it's certainly closer to reality than not because of the variable of the way that the the, the, light's the light actually is emitted by the light, and and the way the light is reflected inside the aquarium. Correct. Right, and it's the geometry of the lights themselves, right, that really help to push that light down into the aquarium. Yeah, right? and, 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 and how the, much and the angle angle of inflection that that light comes in at. Yeah, and, and again, I keep trying to tell people it's, if this is if this is a total surface area of light, you've got light coming from all over here going down this way. Mm -hmm. If you only have this much going, you only have it coming from this. Right, much. you have a single chip that has everything packed into. And a, they're different, yeah. and they have different angles and everything else, and it all is going mm -hmm. to impact on the glass differently. And it's certainly if it's clean, it's going to be better than if it's a little bit dirty. If you're doing it in a black tub, then you don't have an aquarium. Right. Uh, um, yes. You know, it's a look down, I guess, or a touch tank. And, uh, and so the idea is, is to see how water obviously affects those differently, uh, you know, each light than it does for, for an air. And that's the real goal behind doing that. And in the BRS one, I think Vincent's got some pictures he showed. Uh, some really good visual aids to understand this mm -hmm. and why it matters so much between and also the testing that he did. Throw up a couple of those. They did really good graphics for this video yes, they too, did. by the way. He used a laser. This is something that I, I had forgotten that Ryan and I talked about the laser thing. And when I spoke to him after he did this, I said, wow, that laser thing was a great idea. Whoever came up with that, you should really pat him on the back. He's mm -hmm. like, we were the ones that talked about that. And I right. was like, I forgot. Mm -hmm. um, but what what's important to understand is once light gets outside of a certain angle like this even if it hits the glass mm -hmm. it goes through the glass and out of the glass vincent had that one up first i don't know where it went to but that was yeah. the first one that he showed is how much light went out of the glass if it was a you know past that angle of incidence that yeah. light just goes out and that's why you see the light for instance down on the floor mm -hmm. and then you know you also get that bounce back light that comes back in yep and uh and it's super important because that's also how you get more light into the corals. Right, and it's 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 why the par differences are going to ultimately, right, this it's light, this light, all the par this, yes, exactly, the light getting reflected right there, it's why certain lights will have better performance at the bottom of the tank than other lights, yeah. right? At the top, you're pretty much all about the same, especially right underneath the light, right? right? But as you, once you start to get down, that's where it starts to eat lights that have very large panels per se, right, are yep. going to have more of an even distribution. And the interesting the part that he explained about this too is in the early days, before there was even much LEDs, it was T5 and, and metal halide, and mm -hmm. all the tests that were done were done in, in air, air. Right. And it was thought that, well, metal halides just have more punch and they've got more coverage and they do it better, et cetera, mm -hmm. than the T5. And again, it's back to that point source, right, mm -hmm. versus a whole panel of light. And then BRS showed that. In fact, a whole panel of T5s will do better than even a metal halide would. One thing uh, that they didn't talk about at all, it also matters the what what substrate is in the bottom of the tank yes. too, right? Um, so if you have a, a glass bottom and you're going for a, mm -hmm. a black glass bottom tank, that's going to have different par differences than a tank that has white sand. Yeah, it's actually or better if it's white sand. It's great if it's white yeah, sand. Yeah, somebody actually said, well, you got a reflective surface in the glass below. Well, no, because most of the angle of incidence is going to go straight, straight through. through. Right, <laughs> yeah. Know, like... But if you put white sand in there, it actually reflects yes, it light does. back again. Yes, it does. You know? so, it, um, it, so there's a lot of talk out there. And, you know, the reality is, is that you're not going to get perfect in testing because everybody's tank is going to be slightly different. Mm -hmm. But there is one very common thing that's in everybody's tank. That's water. Yeah, it's water. And, and some so, water will be clean, some water will be dirty, yeah. but it gives you a more realistic idea of how a light is going to perform 
in its actual use case. And on top of that, the real way to test it, that's why we showed the thing with the corals and the shadowing, mm -hmm. is to actually do some testing with coral and what in the tank. And what I'd like to do with your tank mm -hmm. is actually, you have that really crowded tank now. Yeah, yeah. Let's go throw a G5 over that tank and let's mm -hmm. throw a, a Sky over that tank and we'll see that they do, you know, the measurements, how they change, how they're different, right. et cetera. Because the, not just the, the spread of the light, but kind of the, you know, the condition of the light, you know, I can go like this, you know, in the light and block out some of the light, you're going to get all that color fringing. That's mm -hmm. where you get the disco ball and everything too. Exactly. And I mean, corals, what's really interesting about that tank too now is that it's so overgrown. It's the corals on the, that are still covered up, but it's the corals that are near the bottom and act the glass that are actually having the best growth at this point, right? Because they're getting um, some reflected light down into exactly. the Exactly. The other ones have just kind are just kind of growing out like this mm -hmm. now. They're not really growing up anymore right. to a certain degree. They still grow up a little bit, um, but they're just growing out. The other ones are getting below that, near the glass especially, because they're taking a little bit of that refle right. reflected light. Those ones are growing kind of around and right. out. Right, and that's you why know? you get that nice that, that nice evenness down near the bottom too, because mm -hmm. you're getting all that reflected light down right in yeah. the front and the mm -hmm. edges. It's, it's absolutely that. Okay, so mm. uh, so that was the the BRS uh, live stream. But, but you should a, go watch it if you haven't if you haven't because it's really good. And let's let's hit back on the Devon live stream a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that you, in terms of kind of all the conversation that's been out there, and you know, um, we do read a lot. You, you and I spend a mm -hmm. lot of time doing this. You know, I think that that the live stream answered a lot of questions, yes. which was a lot of things um, that were much easier to do to explain verbally than they were to take from a written way or something like that. And I, I, I really enjoyed, you know, the kind of the curtain getting pulled back and you did that deep dive. Did that, as, uh, as some will say, my, uh, my used car salesman. Yeah. <laughs> he, we have feelings too, guys. <laughs> I don't, okay. That one I don't care about. I know. That one I don't have, I don't have a problem with. Uh, I have the most problem when people are like, no, you guys didn't design that light. And I'm like, there are people who spent a lot of hours on this thing. Yeah, you know? exactly. So and clearly, that they, one just, clearly they took some overstock from someone else, yes. you know, and just <laughs> modified it a little bit, please. But let's move on. Okay. All right. We love our product. Uh, Anyways. <laughs> we're not the only one that loves our product because reviews are rolling in on BRS. Now, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, BRS is the site that has the most uh, customer reviews on products. And uh, yeah, we've got seven reviews out there right now. Yep. Five for fi five out of five stars on all seven reviews. Um, so I am just going to. That is a little like let's you know let's take a victory lap a little bit for now. Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, you know, and uh, people will say, oh, it's because BRS and Neptune are together. Uh, no. We don't. Know, BRS, I don't even know who. Reviews we don't these know things. who these people are who are reviewing it. The reviews are just um, are, are 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 hitting on so many goals that we had for this light. And it's really nice to see those out there, um, you know. So thank you for those. Uh, thank who you reviewed. for those who reviewed. And for those of you who haven't reviewed our products that are on the live stream, and uh, especially if you really like our stuff, and I see you guys out there, mm -hmm. do us a favor: go leave a couple of reviews on on a couple of products. Give us what you think we deserve: four stars, five stars, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's not four or five stars, uh, hit let one us, us up know. and let us know let why. Let us know why. Uh, exactly. Because we want to know. Give us the opportunity to make it right. So, all right. Do we have any questions out there, Vincent, that people have? A little slow today, huh? The questions. Yeah, I've noticed, but that's okay. People aren't uh, all wound up like they sometimes are. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Cleaning the probes, Angel de Jesus. Uh, do when can you clean the probes, or do you clean the probes uh, for the apex? You go ahead and answer that one, Paul. Yeah, um, you know the probes can be cleaned um, just in a light um, vinegar and water bath. You can use a little bit of citric acid if there's a lot of calcification on it very light, you don't need to do that heavily um, by any means, and then just give them a rinse. Big thing is that, um, uh, you know, when you clean the probes, just be ready that you're gonna have to calibrate them. On the ORP probe, you don't calibrate it. Um, the ORP numbers are gonna change a whole lot when you clean that probe, mm -hmm. and the reason being is, part of the way that that probe works is it does have a biofilm that kind of okay. coats its surface. When you clean that biofilm, essentially, you know, it has to build back up again. Okay. Um, and then so it takes uh, it that a typically days? takes a couple days for it to do. Um, your numbers will be different after that. Um, it's kind of a matter of um, establishing a new average and norm after you clean an ORP. Okay. Um, you'll know that an ORP probe needs to be clean though, because 
your num you're just not seeing the changes as much anymore because okay. the buildup on it becomes too much. And the salinity probe? The salinity probe can absolutely be cleaned. It can be it it will have the most calcification because of the glass. Little animals design. and stuff will go on it. Yep. And stuff. So that one can be cleaned, but just make sure when you're cleaning it to be very careful. It's not a probe that you want to jam a toothbrush or a small Q tip into it or anything like that. Because it has a, it's glass, and that glass is very thin for the way that it works. Um, so be very careful with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. let's see another question here. Um, here's one I want to take on. It says, uh, uh, "Light would make you a hundred times what it will if you just priced it better. It was your opportunity to pull people in with more of a great light. Twenty-four inches for fifteen hundred is nuts. So, so I know there's a lot of talk about cost out there in the sky. Yeah. So this we'll we'll get to that in a second. But okay. first of all, the the, the price in the sky is $870. It's priced, uh, you know, for the amount of watts and for the coverage that it has and for, you know, the, the U.S. support and all of the other things right in line with all the other lights. Did you see that reef to reef? Oh, that was good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I wish we would have. Uh, that was good. That, that was there. done by John. on John's reef. reef um, he put up a great graph. He took probably 20, 30 different lights, right? Mm -hmm. And priced it based on wattage to um, dollars, mm -hmm. right? Um, and um, essentially the sky was right on the slope of the line, yeah. you know, in terms of being in line with other products that are at that wattage. Right. And then same with the number of LEDs. Based on the number of LEDs, right? 104 and the, LEDs yep, and, and the And the total price, it was right in line with, or below um, right. a lot of lights that you would say, you know, are... And back to his question, he said uh, 24 inches for $1,500. I don't understand that. Uh, it's not. A 24-inch tank would take one sky over, and even at that, it would be lit, like, incredibly well for right. my, my SPS. Right. Ta my so, tank is... It'll go to 36 inches. My tank runs, is a 24-inch tank. It runs 50% at most, um, and my whites never really get above 30% overall intensity. Right, you know? right. So. We got other questions out there. Let's see here... Uh, pa, 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 pa. wish they could keep it in stock. So if uh, Marcus's Reef is talking about the sky, you can go out right now to uh, many local fish stores out there who have them in stock. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go out to bulkreefsupply.com or saltwateraquarium.com or premium aquatics or aqua cave. Any of those places out there online carry the sky and it's in stock right now. So yeah, uh, no excuse if you want to buy it. Yeah, it's, def it it's definitely available. Um, we're keeping a good good um, uh, eye on velocities, making sure that you know all the major players will remain in stock and things like that. But at some point, who knows? Yep. You know, it's here now. I saw somebody here that uh, uh, sells cars, so I wasn't sliding you. Somebody else said that, <laughs> not uh, me. Uh. <laughs> so, uh, so okay. Uh, what else? I think that's good for questions for right now. Let's dive into the next thing. Okay. Uh, the next big announcement we had is we actually launched the Energy Bar 632 into Europe and into the UK. Uh, we've been talking about it for a couple times. It was on our live stream a few we weeks ago. We talked about it in the beginning of July, mm -hmm. and um, for a variety of different reasons, it's you know it takes a long time to get things internationally and all that sort of different stuff and get it in the supply chain. But we waited until our you know um, main dealers in the EU and the UK mm -hmm. had supply. And we have released uh, released them. Um, so we released the Shuko version, which you can see here. The UK version, which is a little, little bit more down, which is a three outlet version, um, right there. Six, um, oh, three conductor. Three conductor. Yeah. I don't know why I said three outlet. Yeah. Uh, six outlets on it. Um, and um, so those this is, those are yeah. available now for sto from stores that have them, and also online for any of you international guys that are watching this now or tomorrow if it's too late already. For it you is guys. late for them. Um, <laughs> I, I think you need to get into one of the most exciting parts that we didn't talk about at all uh -huh. when we talked about uh, the features of this the price. Yes. Price is a, a, an amazing surprise. Uh, we know that a lot of people internationally have a hard time with our products price-wise because between shipping and the ability for d distributors to carry it and support it, the prices t tend to go up more. It's so um, just we kind of talked about this in the sky pricing a little bit, but it's Neptune Systems right. sells to distributor, right. right? And they had to get over the ocean, and I get like a FedEx price increase every week about international yes. shipping costs now and how they're constantly going up, um, and they are going up. Uh, so then they have to absorb all that. Yes. Then from distributor, it then has to go to dealer mm -hmm. right and then that dealer then sells to person yeah. 
So the and then there's this other thing yeah. called that, which yeah. Is well, they have to distribute. They have to obviously the distributor has to support the product, RMAs, bringing it into the country, uh, the the cost of shipping, small amount of uh, duty. All of those things get rolled into it, and then stores have to make a profit so they can have a store and a storefront or an online storefront or whatever it may be. And that has traditionally made the price, um, you know, uh, a lot higher overseas. Yeah. For bringing this to market, we made uh, some some pretty uh, insane <laughs> pricing uh, across the board. Pricing, introductory right? pricing. So this is just we don't know when we're gonna we're gonna end it, but we wanted to make sure the first people out there to be able to get these are going to get them at a great price. Uh, and also, so we don't hear this, all the stripe online about how Right. So the, the exciting thing about this is basically we have price parity. Um, if you were to purchase, uh, if this product were available in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and it were available at the same price as the Apex for say, let's it's say very $100, close. it's very close to that same equivalent price with all the VAT, which is value added tax. No, 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 no. no without. Without VAT Without tax, the VAT. Without the, sorry, I'm gonna, without the VAT for sale. Correct. You know? So I'll give you some examples because the question was asked, what are the prices on the Apex itself, okay, which is the whole kit of the Apex with the Energy Bar 632 and the four probes. Mm -hmm. uh, with the VAT, it's 899 euros, which is basically the same price as it was. I think it's $20 more or 20 euros more than it was with before the with, with the Energy Bar 6. Mm -hmm. So that's insane. You're getting the new Energy Bar 632 in that mm -hmm. uh, for 20 euros more than the previous one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the uh, in the UK, it's 759 pounds ster sterling. Yeah. So really good deal. And so, if you already have an Apex, right, you can buy these and plug it in, even though you have an Energy Bar 6 already. If you have a silver Apex, that's the mm -hmm. best way to explain it, don't you think, Paul? Silver Apex, sure. Because the other one, yeah. It's so if you have a silver Apex. If you have a silver Apex, you can go buy one of these Energy Bar 632s and it will cost you just 285 euro, uh, including VAT, or 243 pounds sterling in the UK. It's an incredible price. It's introductory only. Mm -hmm. um, and the it, Apex ELs. And these are essentially too. what the prices were on the classic EV6. Um, Very close, yes. And you know, in the US here, we are at $160 for the classic EV8, mm -hmm. and we are at um, 280. 280 for the EV832. Correct. So we essentially offered the the 632 at no additional cost. Yeah, more and or the, less. It, absolutely. And that yeah. the prices I'm giving you are in uh, in euro for instance like I said include a 21% VAT. So that should tell you yeah. that should tell you right there. Mm -hmm. um, but they are sold out in uh, a few stores already but they're continually coming over from the distributor into the UK for instance yep. or into the various stores in the mm -hmm. EU. So ask your local fish store or check one of those online stores there to see if you can get one. We're not going to go into what they do or anything, because we did that in another, uh, another yeah, show. It's, so uh, it's, it has. But part, there it is has, one more piece of news. Oh, you're going to pull that one out? Yes. So this actually says prototype on it. Prototype on it. Uh, this is uh, the universal outlet version. So in lots of places around the world, they don't have the Shuko version. They don't have the uh, uh, the UK version. And they have, plugs. there's a lot of different international outlets out there. Essentially, this will accommodate most of those different Yeah, types. like the weird one that they have in For Italy. Yeah. They have a weird one in, in For example, I could take this Shuko one. I wouldn't use, I'd use the Shuko power bar if you're using Shuko plugs and you can plug it in. Correct. So actually, I put it in upside down. It'll take the, it'll be the Chinese one. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll work into this. Yep. Uh, just a bunch of different ones. That's why it's got all the funny things on it. Right. Anyway, this will be available in probably, I don't know, six to eight weeks uh, around the world. Yeah, so we're building those up um, as well for the uh, Universal, um, launching only with the Shuko in the, U in the UK right now. Question from Lucas says, uh, I'm assuming anyone with 220 volt external pump here in the US. Uh, we don't really sell these domestically. Yeah. Uh, there, if there is a very specific purpose from, say, uh, an integrator a company like Tenji, for instance, that has a, a need, they can contact us directly and then we can release them. We do try to protect the international markets to some degree from gray mm -hmm. market importation and that it, kind of the, thing. the big reason why we don't sell 220 here in the u.s is is that gray market stuff you well because it has to be supported locally yeah uh, and i'm hoping that the price parity part um is going to eliminate a lot of this it should you know um and uh, maybe we'll see that on other neptune systems products in the future yeah oh i just thought about one or other we'll thing keep, too yeah 
Um, not on this, just changing subjects. You want to move on from this? Yeah, I want to move on from this. Uh, just, uh, I wanted to talk about, Vincent's like, what are you going to throw at me now? Um, I see I'm, him over I'm in the corner wondering of my eye. the he's same like, thing. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, what is this? Um, no, I wanted to talk again about stores in the sky. We do have a lot of demos going up across the country. Oh, yeah. So if you do want to see the sky in action, check with your local fish store, especially if they are a big Neptune Systems dealer. Chances are they're going to be hanging one over a tank or they already have hung them over tanks already in the store. Mm -hmm. um, some stores are just going hog wild, like, uh, like Reef Systems, for instance, and we have a few others, Reef Co. and uh, plenty of others that are doing it. Uh, we do have some that are a little slow in the draw to get it over their display tanks, though. There's an incredible store in San Jose. Yeah. Yeah, I heard. I was I was hearing about this. I, we talk about them all the time. I mean, literally, Neptune we, Aquatics. We, we plug them on a regular basis. I think I saw basis. them out here. Actually. He was on here maybe earlier, yeah. but um, this is the best time to talk about. At maybe this he point, at this point, he, you know, I mean, he's Robert and Neptune Aquatics are big Kessel people. We get it, we understand. Yeah. But um, the sky is just over frag tanks at Neptune yeah. Aquatics. Yeah, it's and over. We, I think they're an enemy tank, isn't it? The one? No, it's over just a frag tank. It's over just one of the of the of the of the row of tanks. So if you go and look at, there is a live stream where uh, where I I showed it over a four foot tank in in their uh, in their uh, I guess their big display area they have all these beautiful mm -hmm. tanks and mm -hmm. i said you that big tank that you have there is just asking for like three skies over it robert three yeah That's just all three and he's like build me a, a, a canopy for it and myself and vincent both said okay so now that's the challenge right there is like you need to get three skies over that and we'll help you get a canopy together so robert when you watch this if you're not watching now or um, if somebody knows Robert and be yeah. like, yeah, they were talking about you. <laughs> oh, that would be stream. fast. He's probably being texted yeah, right yeah, now exactly. by somebody. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, leave, leave a sky on there. You know, if you want a little sparkle, you know, more than the sky is giving, leave mm -hmm. one of the sky, or sorry, well, leave one of the Kessels up there uh, to do that, or a couple of the uh, A80s up there. Yeah, the A80s sparkle with back the sparkle you, and the shimmer would be you great. Want more shimmer than the sky, but come on, Robert. Mm -hmm. Seriously, be, be, be the man. Be cool. <laughs> oh, oh you giving crack, Robert. You yeah. Crack me All right. So what, the thing we're going to really talk about today, uh, uh, tech-wise, right? Tech-wise, that we're going to do is uh, a, I, I hear a lot of questions out on the internet, and also people ask me, um, why do you need to have such uh, such control over your light? when pretty much all you do is just set the light and forget it, right? You set mm -hmm. up your schedule and you never think about it again. Why does it need to be integrated into an ecosystem you know, like the Apex? What advantage could I possibly have to that? So I challenged Paul to come up with uh, some of these things. Obviously, I, I knew some of them. Um, I, I just came up with a few things. <laughs> a few things, yeah. yes. So um, what we're going to do right now is go through some of these um, use cases that uh, that you can have for why you want to integrate your lighting and, and lighting, um, I, I would say, not just off-on mm -hmm. control, but spectrum control or intensity control, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So which one are we going to start with? Yeah, um, so I think the first thing to talk about when we talk about um, how an Apex is going to be connected um, uh, to, to you, the person, right? Um, whether that be connected through an Apex um, or be connected through Bluetooth is what is the just the advantage of those connections right right um you know we spent a lot of time on making bluetooth so for those that don't know i'm gonna stop you interrupt right. you oh um, no way you never do <laughs> which that is i've to never say, seen that for happen. those that don't know the sky can run independently over bluetooth without an apex or it can run with an apex and so right now we're trying to talk about why you would want to run it with the apex why you'd want to run it with the apex neptune systems spent a lot of time on standalone control yes bluetooth control Right, um, and we wanted to make that very reliable. And uh, what we have seen out there in the, um, in the in the space is that people are experiencing a very reliable experience mm -hmm. um, using Bluetooth. But, but um, a wire is always better uh, in this context. Yeah, if you're all in the same area, like you know, around one tank, mm -hmm. it's it's always best to use a wire. Yeah. And um, that's something that you get the option to do when you connect up to an Apex. Mm -hmm. It allows um, you know, for connectivity. Um, we have Y cables, um, so you don't necessarily have to run 
20 foot a bunch of 20 foot right. cables you can just keep one daisy cable. chaining them down the line if you have multiple lights mm -hmm. and that sort of thing and then connect them into the apex right you get the same user interface whether it is in the apex okay. or if it's bluetooth connected right so there's not necessarily a feature advantage in terms of just the light well there but, is if you're on the apex but when we do add the apex right, right then we get all of the things that an apex can do all of the things that are connected Mm -hmm. um, to an apex also working with the lights right right and so there's a lot of different things that we can do um, you know to kind of so we unlock understand the power. state right because there's yeah. all kinds of things that change state in your aquarium mm -hmm. based on you know I saw uh, you know David on here he said you know what if your temperature changes or your pH changes or there's all of these different things that can change on your tank you can mm -hmm. have uh, you know various inputs all of these kinds of things and that can change now again I think a lot of people might say Paul well really is there really any use to that mm -hmm. at all mm -hmm. so that's what i think we want to answer so a few of those today one thing that we try to do is we try to make the aquarium experience more of a streamlined simple experience mm -hmm. right so for example right if we are going to do a photo mode or a maintenance mode or something like that when you go into photo mode the idea is to you know go put your light into photo mode right right um and um but when we do photos as well, sometimes we want to take top-down pictures. Right. Sometimes we want to do all these different things. Do you really want to go, okay, so on my Bluetooth Apex, I'm going to do this. Then on my Apex, I'm going to turn off this, 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 and this. Right. No, you don't necessarily want right, to do right. that. Right? right. What you want to do is I want to go hit one button, right, or one outlet, so to speak, right? right? And then everything goes into photo mode like it needs to So it chooses into. the spectrum that I want, right? Mm -hmm. It maybe turns my power heads off completely so I don't get those little bits of things floating through the water, right? Exactly. When you take a picture. Mm -hmm. um, it turns down my return pump so it's just, maybe it's not all the way going back, but, but it's, it's, it's just, just barely trickling slowly, over right? the top. You know, that kind of um, thing. It turns off your skimmer, right? Oh yeah, it so turns the off skimmer the skimmer. doesn't overflow because the sump Very level's gone up. Um, and, uh, you know, we can do this a lot of different ways and it's going to get easier as things happen. But right now it's virtual outlets and things like that. Well, that make we're, that happen. we're definitely putting a lot of work into user interface mm -hmm. um, and changing over. You can see right now some of the precursors to that in the beta of the of the front screen that's changed. Yeah, that's just if, a, if we want to jump over to the app. Yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's really just the tip of the iceberg. Um, so this is, you know, kind of the new home screen, if you will. Right. right. And so if I click on my sky right now, it's going to go into landscape mode, of course. So oh, look at that so nicely. Um, and, oh, wow. uh, you know, you can necessarily, right, we have the opportunity here to select any of the modes. Hypothetically, as time goes along, there'll be another mode up here where you can say how long you want things to happen for. Okay. Right? So I can switch my tank over to Neptune Sky mode right now, or I can switch my mode over to photo mode, and then maybe there's a timer setting that comes up next. But we can do this in an Apex right now. Okay. Do you want to go through that? Yeah, yeah let's do that. Okay. So right now, those things only change the light. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is set it up so that not just the light changes, but other mm -hmm. things that you want to, to, to take an action on. I think that's what I do, do, do come on. Sorry, guys, I had a locked portrait mode from my reading the other night. Um, so, <laughs> um, so basically, right, you know, here's my sky on my tank, right? Um, and you know, I can click on that. And there's my schedule. Okay. Right. Um, now, if I want to do multiple things, I've been we've been through this before. We can do multiple things with feed modes, okay. right? Um, or we can kind of nestle more things into virtual outlets. Okay. Me personally, I I prefer to use a virtual outlet, right? So I could add a virtual outlet here, you know, and call this photo mode. Okay. Okay. And then that photo mode is there. Okay. And then essentially. I can go into photo mode and I can trigger that on or off, or I can put that with a feed cycle, right? You can say, well, Paul, why, why would you want to also create a feed cycle and everything else? It doesn't really matter um, how you do it, but um, the virtual outlet allows you to give more timing and, and things okay. like that. Um, a little more complexity. A little bit more complexity, exactly. So I have this virtual outlet mode and I'm just going to keep it off because this is something that I would just turn on or off normally. Um, it's now you can see that it's a new tile. I'm going to go grab that highlighted in blue right there right you know, and I pull it down so when what other things do I want to do in photo mode well 
I want to turn my light to a specific color. Right now, I do that through a profile, and I choose a sky, right? Okay. Um, I happen to know already what the photo mode colors are, right? And they are, you know, heavy on the on the amber green, light on the UV and the blue. And I'm just approximating these. I'm sure it's probably right. slightly different. And going from there, and then where I want to go intensity-wise. And then uh, I can call this. So you have those the same because you're photo, not really ramping. Photo as well, right? And I'm not going to go through every painstaking step here. I think sure. I'm just going to touch on a couple of different things. So now I have my photo mode. And then I'm going to go back over to my so sky. So the photo mode is a profile. Is, is a it is a profile. Come on. And go to advanced. And then I just say if outlet. If outlet. Photo mode equals on, then photo, right? And so now if I were to turn that on, right, it would automatically um, put the lights into photo mode over my tank. Okay. Okay. Then... Go back to that screen that we were on before? Yeah, no problem. So that's in the upper left where you mm -hmm. did that, right? Yeah, so that's under the gear mode and advanced. Oh, gear and advanced, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then finally, right, I want to do some other things that when I, when I do that as well. That could be an example of my core pump. Okay, so in my core pump, I'm going to go and hit the advanced mode that I just did there before. Okay. Right? And I'm going to use photo mode here too. If outlet photo mode equals on, then the percentage I want my core pump to run. Okay. Maybe I want to run it like 4%. That's 4 to 5% is basically just a trickle in my tank, right? Okay. And then I would go through, right? And I would, um, you know, put that maybe in my By the way, that'll pump. work on CJ pumps just like that too work with on. IOTA. It absolutely ah, will. Um, then I can go in and do that on my, um, you know, wave pumps. I can do, make sure my skimmer pump turns off. I don't even have to do my skimmer pump because I already have that set up by using the task mm -hmm. um, to automatically turn off anytime my core goes below a certain percent. Right. So that's kind of linked to it just implicitly. Yes. So the skimmer and the, because I set it up through a task, they're so already now together. So now you go turn photo mode on. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm, this, this is now I'm going to go to 400 level here on you. Okay. okay. So I turn photo mode I'm gonna, on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to geek you out here. So now I. Is, I already know where you're going. <laughs> I already know what you want. So uh, we didn't rehearse this either. No, no. Uh, so now, you know, I turn it on. I'm going to forget that I turned that on. I already and know. And I'm the, going to bed. I already know. And gonna my fish this. are going to die. All right. So um, a good way to make that basically to kind of trigger a, um, you know, so to prevent it from going for too long, if you will, right? One way that I like to do this, I'm going to turn it off because I don't want my corals to be mm -hmm. in photo mode right now. But, um, you know, is to basically go in here. Okay, and I actually, if I have a feed statement available, right, I'll just say if feed A, you know, then on. Okay. Oh. But now what I'm going to do here, right, is maybe maybe feed A is is uh, my, you know, I use that for several different things, and I want this to run a certain period of time, right? So I'm going to use like a min time statement, and say I only would ever want this road mode to run for any time I activate this mode, I always want it to run for 20 minutes. Okay. Right, so I use a min time statement that will that will only that once I trigger it on, it doesn't matter if if the state if the setting is back to off again, okay. which is what the feed mode will do in about three minutes in my tank. Right, okay, it will go back. But It'll stay on for twenty minutes. But it's not going to actually move the slider to off. Nope. And we need to know here too that you're not going to move this to on. Yeah, you're not going to come in here. In fact, because if you moved it to on, in fact, what do you want to do here? is just get rid of this photo mode entirely from your dashboard. So you don't accidentally So you don't ever even need that. The only way that you're ever going to utilize that is by hitting So my way I would have done it from learning from you before mm -hmm. would have been I would only I would use that same uh, virtual outlet mm -hmm. but I would only ever switch it from off to auto and then I'd have a win statement in there. Mm -hmm. That could also work. That'd be another way to do it is keep it off and you just have a set on period and um, it would all you have a period of which you want it to always be off. The big thing about min time for it to work correctly without having another virtual outlet in there, the big thing about a min time is it has to be a programmed 
event. Okay. Right? That creates the on or the off state. You manually going in and turning on or right. off, right? That's not gonna do it's anything. not going to activate that min time right. statement. Now, there are other ways to do this, right? This is just one way and one solution. If you didn't have a feed cycle, let's say, right? You could have one cycle that only, that you essentially do what you said, right? Mm -hmm. That just flips it on or off, and it's actually a second virtual outlet. And then... Because I have that for my, my just so mm -hmm. you know, my water fill on mm -hmm. my... Um, on my big water vat, just for for the sake of it, even though it's got a float valve or whatever mm -hmm. on the top, um, and sensors, right? Yeah. I still have that when statement in there. And when I want my water vat to fill off from the solenoid, I just move it from off to auto. And sometimes it won't all the way fill, mm -hmm. right? Because it, I, I took it all the way too low in the, in the and water. And you only let it run a certain and period of time. A period of time, and then exactly. I go and turn it from off to auto again, and it'll go the rest of the way. So that's using a win statement, right? right? So you turn it to off, from off to auto, and so right. now in auto mode, it's set to run. Yeah, that's what David's right? question was. Would it be on or auto? So in, the, in this case, it would be auto, it, and even in your case, it would be auto. And then what would happen in the win statement? Okay, so let's say we used a win statement, mm -hmm. here, and you would always have that triggered in the off position. When you put it into auto mode and you have a set on statement in auto mode it right. would turned on but the win statement would be a win statement that if it's ever on for 30 minutes then right. turn it back to manually off right that would also be a way to do it okay so that's one thing that's really cool about apex programming if you're into this kind of stuff there's a lot of right ways to do that and what makes good programmers and bad programmers is how quickly they get to the objective <laughs> Okay. Right. Having many lines of code. You guys are all geeking out out there. Many, many lines of John code. John Halsey of, of the world. I mean, many out lines there. of code doesn't necessarily mean a good David thing. David says, of course, the order of operations. That's kind of a linear kind of uh, mm -hmm. goes through there, you yeah. know. Um, uh, and so there's many examples you could do this. We could have a party mode, right? Where, um, you know, you want to flip it on mm -hmm. and off and it goes to just a blue mode and maybe you have less flow in that. So all your quarrels open up, your right. LPSs and stuff like that. And people come over and they just see this tank. It's got a know, nice easy motion instead of the. And that maybe is only triggered to every run, you know, an hour and twenty minutes, right? And anytime. Right. So after you've goes, had, you tip back a few. Yeah, because you you're going your to forget. Tank. You're absolutely <laughs> going to forget. Um, other examples: water change, right? So I actually like my lights to go a little bit more white during water changes, but less intensity. Okay. Right. This allows me to see things a little bit more effectively. A um, little bit less blue um, when I'm cleaning a tank, and then I actually tied the the sky into changing colors when I do my maintenance cycles. Very cool. Right? And then when I finish that, it goes back into the normal programming mode the sky would be in. So this is, again, this is the reason we're talking about this right now is, uh, you know, people ask, why do you want to integrate? Why is it, why is it such a good thing to integrate mm -hmm. uh, lighting or advanced lighting into uh, a control ecosystem like the Apex? Because you do have this ability to have multiple things happen. So these are all user impacts mm -hmm. right these are all things that the user does um, right what's really cool about the apex 2 though is it has an entire entire set of inputs that it monitors on its own okay one great example is temperature mm -hmm. right so um if you are um if the temperature gets too warm you can turn off the skies programming you can turn down the intensity of the skies right right um so they're not putting as much output you could also turn That's off. really important. I mean, it used to be really important in the metal in, halide days. In metal halide days. Yeah. But even now, it, you know, people who are running, let's say, three skies, you saw the canopy at Reef Systems. If you have a really tight canopy and your ambient temperature in your house is warm or the air conditioning goes out when you're not home, just having those, you know, having, you know, maybe 450 watts running mm -hmm. of skies inside that canopy with not much place for the air to go. It's where the air goes is yeah. the big thing. You have to make sure that when you're designing a canopy that you make a place for the hot but air But not everybody does, and you yeah. want it to be that way. But the, the, the great thing is is that if it does get too hot in there, mm -hmm. because, the, because the temperature inside the canopy is also, is also moderated by the ambient temperature right. in the room. So if you have a, a, an HVAC issue, mm -hmm. right, that that canopy is going to get hot and now granted the skies themselves will shut themselves down at mm -hmm. some point but in the interim it's still going to be warming your water yeah along with the room warming your water so you don't need to air, add any more heat you mean anytime you're blowing air over the water you do get some evaporative cooling mm -hmm. right um, but there comes a point when it is putting so much hot air into the area right that it's going to heat up the tank as well right um, I did like that when, sorry, sidebar, um, did like that one of the reviews that happened on um, BRS mentioned that when they did the, put the skies oh, on yeah. there, right, their tank temperature dropped by a couple of degrees, right, and that was because of evaporative cooling. Yeah, that was a Cuban reefer in Florida. Oh, really? That had that. And, awesome. And 
yeah, it stands to reason. It's evaporation, so yeah. evaporation cools. So. Um, and so the only other thing also to mention is, um, you know, Mark Callahan has put these in a couple of his videos, and mm -hmm. I really like this, is he hooks up a magnetic reed switch, right, which is essentially... This is uh, a really cool idea. Right. Vincent's got it. And you, you wake over there, Vincent? Okay. <laughs> right, which is a magnetic reed switch, you know, that essentially yeah, look at this. opens or closes. So you can see it here. So here's a here's a drop down tank. It looks very similar to the one he has, um, but this is for one of his clients. And when he lifts up the tank, you'll notice that the lights actually uh, go off in this case, but they could just dim down because he's got that reed switch. Right. Um, and um, the magnetic reed switch. I have a picture of it here. If we want to see it. Pull back to the iPad. There you go. Uh, just it's very simple. Magnetic end that wires to our I/O breakout box. Okay. One wire goes to ground. One wire goes to switch input, and then you would essentially. Oh, I'm sorry. Say, I said sorry, Henry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Henry. Sorry, I got to interrupt you. Oh, wow. Poor Henry. I got I called the wrong one, and Henry's like, that was me. Oh, my God. My apologies, man. I don't know why I had Cuban reefer on the brain. But you guys all get together, and then I get you all confused. And it, it, it does. Now it, I'll never I'll have to pay for that forever. But anyway, you that will. is the, you absolutely that's the reed switch, and uh, it's really cool. You have to have a breakout box to, to be able to connect it up, mm -hmm. uh, and you hook it up just like any other switch, and then you can change... I think for me, one of the cool things of doing this is not just turning it off like he did, mm -hmm. but dimming it's it. just dimming it so you're not just getting blasted, just blasted with yeah. light when you open the canopy every time. Yeah, um, we will. Um, and then finally, um, <laughs> that's just cracking me up. <laughs> I know. Um, He's so pissed. Yeah. Um, uh, it's always a good idea to, to plug your power supply into the EV832 or plug it into a power strip that's in sure. the EV832 so you can measure the power consumption from the sky. Right. Right. Um, not only will you get module disconnection errors that you don't necessarily get in Bluetooth, but then when you connect that power supply up as well, um, you can make sure that your sky is running consistent wattage out wattage um, uh, outputs and things like that. Right. Uh, consumption. So um, you can measure that. Really One of the things, you know, everybody's always uh, buying all of these uh, uh, switch boxes now, wondering what they can use all the buttons for. Mm -hmm. And I haven't done it yet, and I do have one of the switch boxes at home from uh, from Kyle at Adaptive Reef. Yep. Harry's Corals makes uh, the, the the OG ones, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have them. You can go back to the full screen. Yeah, we're thinking about it. Um, and uh, it, you know, it occurred to me the other day that you know it's great to be able to go to your phone and everything, but it's just like it's still not as convenient as having buttons on the tank. And so, if you have looks for your tank that you always enjoy. Having six buttons there, yeah, and just being able to go, dude, okay, and it changes from one color to the next. You go, boop, photo mode, boop, over here to blue. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, the button having not having to take out your phone and do anything else. There's yeah. just something incredibly convenient. It feels good, this. tactile. Yeah. yeah, and those button, those sweet, those boxes are so cool. Yeah, right. They got the. Emergency so how would you do that, Paul? Uh, so that would just be another switch, okay. right? Um, and we could, we're almost out of time, so I don't right. know if we can we can hit it or not. I can absolutely hit it. Um, so we would uh, my favorite uh, view here. Um, you know, so we have these switch inputs on our apex, right? We could or any of the modules that you right? happen to have that have also switch inputs on them. We could rename those button one, right? And then um, I'd go back over to the sky now. Yeah, Rosano says we're using an old iPad. Absolutely, a lot of people use control panels at their tank. Even then, though, I'm going to say it's, I love the tactile buttons, you know? And then I just go here and I say if button. So this is in the advanced area. Closed. My gosh, I hate this little. And then basically you set up a separate profile for each look that you want on the tank, right? Right. And so in this situation, we already have one set up called photo. So when you push a button, you know, and it goes from an open to a closed state. And you there. can just add another line for every single one of the switches that you have. There's a little bit more programming involved in this. You'd actually want to make sure that because that button is just a momentary. Oh, that's right. We have the so, momentary. So it's thing. just a momentary. If it's if it's a if it's a something you go right, right, and it goes up. How does it go? <laughs> right. So if it goes up, you sound like an 870, buddy. Yeah. So if it goes if it goes if it goes up, right, um, it stays in that mode until you push it back down. Uh, most of those buttons though are momentary, so we would necessarily we would need to nestle those inside. But you will find information outlet. on that out on the community forum on how to do momentary buttons yeah. and the button switches and in the instructions from Harry. Uh, Harry. He's and got that as well. Reef. And adaptive yeah. reef. Yeah. So there you go. And 
you can also use Alexa. Mm -hmm. What were we thinking? Yes. You can use Alexa for all of this. Yes, absolutely. All of this works mm -hmm. for Alexa as well. Yes. So, um, other questions. Do we have questions here, Vincent, that we want to cover? Because we're running out we of time are, here. We, are, we have gone over. But that's I, okay. I have a couple here. Slide up to. Yes, let's cover that one first. Rod Hamlet says if hooking multiple skies to a single apex, can each light be controlled together and individually? Large tanks needing different PAR zones. Yes, absolutely. So there is a grouping method that you can do. And so you can have one group of lights and another group of lights. You can also, let's say you have six lights and you want them all controlled separately, you can have six groups, okay? okay. The idea here is though that um, if you have three lights that you want to control the same way, they are in a group together. Got it. Um, and then if you, the other three lights you want to have differently, there's three more groups, so it'd be four groups on that tank. So a question just came up too, uh, when will the sky be able to be connected to my alarm output so I can get a visual alert of an alarm? We actually discussed this before the show. We um, and not in the alarm outlet, so to speak, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you can absolutely make situations. So, let's say um, if pH were getting too high or alkalinity were getting too high or any of these things, you could take a, a drastic... Well, no, no, no. But what he's saying is is that what you could do is, is basically set a virtual outlet based around whether or not the alarm is right. on well, well, or not. What I'm saying is conditions. whatever the condition is going to be, right. right? And so you basically could then say, I want the light to go into this color mm -hmm. when this happens. You and I were also talking about doing like subtle flashing and yeah, things Yeah, because like there that. is an issue with fish. Like you don't want to, you know, freak the fish out by having some drastic change. There's so, not only are you in an alarm condition, so something isn't right with your tank, then you start like yes. <laughs> lights on and <laughs> the off. The fish are like, what the heck? Uh, but I was saying, good. what if you could, for instance, if it... Uh, you know, if you could just change the, the, the color slightly and do it maybe up and down three times every five minutes or something like that. Or, and that's certainly possible. I don't want to, you know, the, the program. It's way more report. complex yeah. to do that for and sure. I mean, I, I kind of wanted to, in general, of having this conversation now, I was like, ah, uh, we have like really cool things coming with timers yes. and stuff like that with yes. the different modes. Um, so um, there's some exciting things coming to the app. Um, I expect um, some pushes will actually happen relatively fairly soon. Um, and the idea is that we're going to be taking care of background stuff, fixing background issues mm -hmm. that come up. But we want to also have little feature enhancements, you know, not only for Sky users, but for all Neptune system users. And so uh, Joe and I were talking. I think you're all going to notice the next one. Uh, we're excited about it. I don't want to tell, tell you about yeah, it now. Yeah, no, no spoilers. But yeah, there's another question I think David Trong asked about uh, drilling more holes in the diffuser. You know, you certainly, you know, can do what you want to do with your light. Uh, obviously, you know, you could void warranty depending on what you do to the light, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you mess something up. But if you did want to get more, like, shimmer out of the, the light, one could do that. You'd want to do it probably only on the white ones because part of the reason that that diffuser is there is to help mute some of the color differences that are coming out and separations that might come out. And so with white, you don't have that problem. Yeah. But with the other colors, I would would. say I would be very careful. I mean, David, you we came to this conclusion through some process. David, um, be, I know that, you, you know, you're, you're very uh, particular in the way that you're going to do that. Um, but most users need to be sure they're using the right drill bit right? You will crack the yes, it's diffuser. Acrylic. Uh, so we laser cut all of those holes, yes. right? So just taking even here a, yes. in Morgan Hill. In Morgan Can you Hill, believe that? We have a laser machine. <laughs> it's so cool. Um, but you uh, we should show that laser machine yes. off at some point. Cool. Uh, but um, it's not just an acrylic drill bit to do it. Yes, um, it, it is a it is a um, very um, slow process. So there's that question. I think that's about all of the questions. I think we covered the questions on pretty much everybody else. Um, are these the favorites on here? Ba, 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 ba. I don't see anything else. Do you, Paul? No, to nothing, handle? nothing that we're going to get into in the next 30 seconds. Yeah, nothing we can quickly answer. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's about it. I think we had a good show today, Paul. Yeah, it was, you we know, covered some fun was, stuff. It was good being back. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Another two weeks. And don't forget about uh, we got Reef Palooza in Chicago and Aquashella in uh, Dallas. The middle of next month for Reef Palooza, and we'll and the end of the month for Aquashella in Dallas. Big show in, at Chicago. The whole crew will be there, um, and we'll be excited to see all of you. David says so. that Vincent needs a shout out. Shout, shout out, out, Vincent. Vincent shout helps out. us out and throws stuff together mm -hmm. all the time. At the very end. How many pictures did I throw to you, Vincent, in the last ten minutes before the, the show started? About fifteen. Yeah, he handled it like a champ as always. Yeah, you guys are. Uh, but anyways. Yep. Yeah. All right. And uh, yeah, there's, uh, I don't think there's anything else to cover. I think we got it all. Yeah.
<laughs> I think that's it. All right, guys. Until next time, enjoy those fish and uh, join us in two weeks for another Let's Talk Reef. See you then, Paul. See you. Bye.